Welcome to the second game of the Clash Bash League semifinals between John and Oryx. Uh, I'm William, Table and Legs, and I'm here with Kevin Smurf Murphy. Kevin, what's up? What's up? Kevin, John lost, unfortunately. So now he gets to play mm. against Oryx uh, Iro and has decided mm. to switch it up, pull out the Bravo. Uh, how is this match supposed to go? Um, I, Ira's just going to play good, consistent value for all of this. She's going to try and get her hero ability off as much as possible. I mean, we're already seeing this with uh, just turn zero, Hidachi into Brutal Assault. Uh, just two card eight, leak one, and get a point of armor, effectively leaking two. This is uh, wow. Th this is right where Ira wants to be. Uh, I mean, we definitely know that Bravo can uh against against more aggressive decks than him uh eek value out of it out value out of the yeah. game with these on hits that really make the opponent incentivized to block with their cards like we saw in the corner finals um yep is debilitate one of those uh it normally would be except the on hit gets one less value against ira than it does any other deck cuz ira just sends kadachi first and only loses one value if this even hits, and then oh, sends the other, the second attack, which uh, gets Ira ability and gets the plus one, kind of gets the plus one back. Um, so I think yeah, Rob is also doing something interesting here that Gear One Flesh and Blood player William would have been really confused by. Instead of activating Bravo, he's saving a card for Arsenal. So this is just the straight up mm -hmm. eight damage instead of a dominated with the on hit effect almost guaranteed. Yeah, so he could have he could have pitched the the blue unmovable and put uh the crush confidence into Arsenal and still bravoed this. And I'm I'm not too surprised to see it. We're just kind of keeping a three for seven with a relevant on hit for later in the game. The blue unmovable is gonna be a little bit tricky to potentially use in this matchup though. So I still might have held on to it. Uh well, we did see turn zero. They played the um, the blank two for six, uh, brutal True. assault. We we did see we did see a brutal assault, but we, it's I have a burning question, which is be like water, terrifying on hit effect against uh with like um, Katsu, Katsu, maybe even Zen. Uh, so how terrifying is it when Ira uses it? Um, not. As bad, I'm very curious to see if they use it. They didn't. They just popped Heart and Cross Trap and well, Goliath Gauntlet, and Goliath Gauntlet. Like, closing the chain. Okay, and then so I think they, they, yeah. So I think they have something in their deck that uh, does good things with Be Like Water. Um, I'm not sure what it would be off the top of my head. Potentially a Descendant Gust Wave, but I, I think that's a little unlikely given the number of d reacts we've seen we're seeing yellow flick flack here Saint, um saint below swapped out one of the reds in bravo's hand he can play crippling crush next turn with ooh. uh heart and cross trap but oh my gosh flying kick nine damage played on chain link uh ooh. three or higher it gets uh plus two so it goes from five to two to nine and it was free did all that with a yeah, yellow cool. Yep, Goliath Gauntlet with Heart and Cross Trap getting you full cards worth of value, and Bravo ha just gonna <laughs> has to take a little bit of tempo back here. He still has that blue and movable stuck in his arsenal because he drew triple red on this turn. That's um, crazy. But uh, you he, also do he get drew to triple see... red and he sunk into another one. Yeah, into another blue. Um, yeah, uh, you do get to see uh, both players are running Heart and Cross Trap Goliath Gauntlet, and this is. No surprise for fans mm. of the format because these are some of the most powerful pieces of equipment. You better have a dang good reason if you're not running them. Yep. Uh, they're they're just they're too much value. Too value on a piece of equipment in a low health format is good. Um I, we saw Icelander running Goliath Gauntlet into snaps at one point when she didn't have striders. Like that's how good those pieces of equipment are. Hard and cross trap, um, like even Blitz. Tromai was running um the blue t-shirt <laughs> she was she was running deep blue which deep turns blue? which turns yeah. a red into a blue which is effectively two value but the fact that hard and cross trap just doesn't ask for a single card in the first place is is yep. absolutely massive very good 
Yeah, and we, we did see Ira Block with one two punch and recoil, which are both cards that care about head jab combo. Mm -hmm. So those are something that's something to look for on the uh, the be like waters, but also potentially just head jab itself. So the, Being in the deck, those are going to make for very good turns. The turn back and forth, the way the tempo's playing out was really interesting, right? So Bravo played that natural crippling crush just by itself. I read a block with mm -hmm. most of their hand through mostly a little bit of vanilla damage back. Bravo comes back. He's got five cards in his to work with, specifically the ones in his hand, which is a crippling crush and three yes. blues. It's yep. the same crippling crush, but it's dominated now. Well, it, it's dominated, but it's for two less because there's no class. Oh, true. It. But that dominate matters more. Like the, the two is super relevant, pushing it over a break point. Um, so that you had to you had to give four cards to keep the last one, most likely. Actually, if I was um, crazy right now and has a D-React in Arsenal, that would be insane. If there's a D React oh! in Arsenal, yeah. This is this is huge. That's this is huge. This is Bravo shifting. took so much. Yeah, he he was very behind. He took a lot to do this. He, even just like the three that he took on. Uh, yeah. Um, the last turn, and he's gonna lose a lot of tempo for this. He basically threw a four card eleven, uh, and now Ira yeah. gets to throw three whole cards back. This is where that tempo comes back and in, back into the game. Um, yeah, the, this is this is rough, and as well we're. We draw into another triple red hand. This blue unmovable still stuck in our arsenal. And we have to give up a pummel because of it. And we're probably looking to take like four more. Depending on what's going to get sent here by Ira. Torn of tempo for five. Do, do you throw the on hit go again. No. I I it's it's interesting. I'm not sure. Bravo. Like if you just give up all of your tempo and hope yeah. they just have like three D reacts in their hand is like your hope. It's 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 tough, right? Because as the kind of deck that Bravo is, because it's it's so blue hungry in its attacks. Um yeah. you can't expect to be able to chain uh meaningful on hits back and forth because you'll inevitably hit an all blue hand. Well Bravo's had the exact opposite. He feels like he's been red flooded for the last three turns. Um he, he's not he able to play to... the big stuff. Yeah, he Bravo has to be in that Goldilocks zone where he can't draw too many blues and he can't draw too many reds. Because if he does either of those things and he doesn't draw the nice three to one ratio every turn or two to two, even, then nothing works quite the way you want it to. The pummels don't look very good then. The uh um the pummels don't look very good, the big red attacks just can't be paid for. Um yeah, it's part of his inconsistency. Okay, so Crush the Week coming in. Ira has had a few relatively weak attacks, but we've also seen some big ones. Uh, and they didn't seem to mind the Crush the Week at all, just took the whole thing. I I don't think Ira minds too much. Kadachis aren't affected by Crush the Week. I think the only... We've seen some blue attacks that uh, would matter, but not oh. like... Push the point for oh. seven. And then he gets to throw the I, sneakers on top, give it a go again. Uh, yeah, this is just going to get snaps wow. into Kadachi into something else. And th this is... Dude, I would be surprised the if, this doesn't, if this doesn't lock up the game. We're going to finally get this unmovable out of our arsenal. Take we get six off it, so we only take one, but this Kadachi's coming in for one and we're probably oh. going to one. Yeah. These breakpoints, though they're not presenting any on hits, are presenting damage. Like strong, consistent value damage. Uh and oh. dying is a pretty good on hit. Yeah, dying's a pretty good yeah. on hit. That's why uh yeah. I was so good in these low health formats. Flying kick for seven. Seven. Yeah, I, I think this'll this is gonna take all three cards, and that should lock up the game yeah yeah he's just gonna take it and because I, I there's no there's no way out of it at that point because you just go kadachi kadachi six seven five and we we're gonna strip four cards every turn for one card out of deck if we want to go that way 
or eventually we're just going to punch through and deal one. So. Uh, well, that wraps up game number two. Kevin, do you have any final thoughts on this match as a whole? Um, D reacts from Ira. That's pretty that clutch. Game that was that that sealed that game pretty yeah. much completely. Having those because Bravo gave up so much life to do that. And and that's kind of a so. gamble you run. Uh, activating. Bravo's hero ability, dumping your whole hand on something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Arx moves on to play either against either Theo or Dat Wheezy in the finals of the Clash Bash League. I was William, and that was Kevin, uh, from Pit Against, the Table Pits live Flesh of Blood call-in show. Make sure to tune into the rest of the Top 8 Clash Bash right here. Bye. <laughs>